tracking bears out here takes a lot of experience. Paul can read each footprint. These tracks are old. A young bear must have thought he heard a seal under the ice. An easy mistake for an adolescent. It was probably just the lapping of water. Further on, evidence that bears can't be far off. These feces are still warm. And Paul recognizes the undigested white fur of a baby ringed seal. The tracks we just crossed indicate the presence of three bears. Grown males are solitary animals, so we weren't surprised to find the footprints of a female and her two cubs. One of them was walking in her mother's footsteps. But now things become more difficult. Paul can't make head or tail of these tracks. All he knows is that we're getting very close. These cubs are about one and a half years old and probably weigh over 200 pounds, and they're not shy. Three hundred feet further off, Mother stands guard. Since they left the den a year ago or more, the mother won't let them out of her sight. She'll nurse them for another year, then leave. of the two cubs, perhaps a male, is extremely inquisitive. What does he want? Through my lens, I feel I can almost touch him. I'm getting nervous. But as long as Paul doesn't react, I must keep rolling. Where's it gone? Is it trying to get around us? Still no word from Paul. And the cub is now 60 feet from us. Too close for comfort. doing? Why doesn't he get out the alarm gun? Shooing has no effect. The cub is now less than 40 feet away. Now the mother starts to grow anxious. And finally, so does Paul. It was the right move. Whew, what a rush. Filmmaker Jérôme Bouvier wanted to get close to polar bears in the high Arctic, but he wasn't prepared to get that close on his first shoot. The experience stands him in good stead for his next encounter when oh, yeah. Animal Planet is back with face to face with the polar bear.
The morning after my first close-up with a family of polar bears on the Norwegian island of Spitsberg, temperature is minus two Fahrenheit, about average for this time of year in the high Arctic. But the bears are nowhere to be seen. What could possibly survive in this frozen wasteland? It's a still life photographer's paradise, but I'm looking for real life and incredibly it hides the bear's main source of food. At the end of March, ringed seals are ready to give birth in snowdrifts by excavating layers under the ice with their powerful claws. Females give birth to a single white coat which won't take to the water for another six days. Time enough for a hungry polar bear to snuff it out. A few days later, I find my family again. And the temperature shot up to plus 26 when it should be well below zero in early spring. Paul is relaxed, not about the weather, but the bears. They ignore us this time, and mother has far more pressing business, newborn seals hidden in snowdrifts. She searches, sniffs, and listens quite unconcerned about her cubs. At 18 months old, they leave the hunting to mother. Her eyes and ears are primed for the slightest crack in the snow or grating below. Then she'll pounce and break through the ice to seize her prey. Are the cubs wise to something? Their sense of smell is acute. A polar bear can detect the odor of a seal a mile away and hear a white coat under 40 feet of snow. The smaller cub, Paul says she's a female, freshens up. Bears have excellent insulation, a thick layer of fat, which means three degrees Fahrenheit is just right, not too hot, not too cold. Anything much above that, they begin to overheat and slow down. They revel in frozen water and crusty snow. The larger cub, a male, if Paul is right, is the more active of the two. His behavior intrigues me. Has his mother's hunting technique already rubbed off? Whereas the mother is constantly on the move, her cub doesn't yet have the reflex or patience to inspect each snowdrift. It's already made a good start, vital if it's to survive alone on the ice. The mother signals for the cubs to move on. An hour later, she seems to be onto something. A few hundred feet separate the bears from a group of ringed seals. The bears will have to be discreet if they stand any chance at all of a kill. A standoff like this in the open does not favor the bears. Without an element of surprise, the seals are as safe as houses. The best way for bears to catch seals on the ice is by still hunting, waiting patiently over a breathing hole for the seal to surface. The other way around just doesn't work. A few days later, the wind makes filming quite a challenge. 
but we managed to keep up with our family and find them around a seal carcass. I don't think they made the kill. Their clean white fur is a giveaway. They must have stumbled across it. But beggars can't be choosers. Kill rates, even for polar bears, are low. Even if they spend half their time hunting, their chances of actually catching a seal are about one in 50. It's not just that seals are elusive. Climate change may also play a part. Global warming causes more snowfall and thicker snowdrifts, more difficult for bears to break through to the seal's lair. In the long term, there'll be less snowfall, so the seals will give birth directly on the ice and the bears will have a field day. But that could lead to the rapid extinction of their favorite prey. It's a delicate balance. Right now, in-house competition means someone is left with the scraps. The carcass is all skin and bone. Bears need fat for energy. An adult can consume 100 pounds in one sitting. This little guy isn't doing too well. It's time for Paul and I to go our separate ways and leave the three bears. We've located their range and the two cubs still have another year with their mother. I want to return next spring to see how the young are making out on their own without the richness of their mother's milk and her experience on the ice. I can't say I'll miss the old Texas bar, but I will miss the magic of this land. And I'll be thinking of them. They have one last year as a family to compete and survive together, where only the fittest will make it. What will I find here in a year's time? This cub will certainly have grown, but will it be so playful? Life evolves so quickly in the North Pole, a lot quicker than elsewhere. The Arctic environment is constantly changing. Global warming causes the ice shelf to melt and the seas to expand. And where the ice reflects heat, free-flowing water absorbs it. As the sea heats up, the surrounding ice melts even faster and the Arctic ice pack has already lost 40% of its thickness in as many years. It's a vicious circle that threatens to become irreversible. He'll have to do better than that to survive, but so far, he's beaten the odds. Most polar bears don't survive beyond their first birthday. <laughs> 